Okay. Good evening, everyone. Hopefully you can all hear and see me. Um, if you can't, please let me know in the chat. Um, so you have joined tonight for um, an Abutters meeting at 381 Beacon Street. We will be discussing, discussing the proposal to um, add a garage, garage attached to the rear of the house with a roof deck above. So this meeting is being recorded and will be used as public record. Please do not participate if you do not consent. A recording of this meeting will be uploaded to my own YouTube channel. Um, I will also include this link in the chat momentarily. So my name is Shanice Pimentel. I am the neighborhood coordinator and constituency liaison for Back Bay for um, the Office of Mayor, uh, the Office of Neighborhood Services under Mayor Marty Walsh. My email is Shanice. Uh, dot Tim and Powell, my last name is spelled with an E-L, not an A-L, common mistake, at boston.com, and my phone number is 617-635-2679. So just some guidelines for participation and some instructions on how to use this platform. Um, so as an attendee, your camera is off and you're automatically muted. Um, the agenda will go as follows. The, we, we will go over the guidelines and process as we are doing right now. Then we will turn the floor over to give um, the applicants uh, the opportunity to give a brief introduction and a presentation of the proposal. Then we will circle back and um, go through a uh, orderly Q&A. We will begin first with written questions, and then we will open up the floor to verbal feedback. So guidelines for participation, we ask that you engage respectfully at all times. Disrespectful behavior will not be allowed and you will be removed from the meeting. The applicants will present their proposal, then we will devote the remainder of the time to feedback. We encourage the use of the Q&A function unless there is an issue of accessibility to better navigate questions, comments, and or concerns. You are also uh, welcome to ask questions in the chat. Like I said, we will go through the Q&A and the chat first and then allow time for spoken feedback. Feedback will be limited to two minutes per person to allow as many people to share their thoughts. Um, you may submit any additional comments to myself uh, via my email, which I will also include in the chat. Upon completion of the community process, this proposal will be scheduled for a hearing and abutters within 300 feet of the proposal will be notified. So a few helpful notes on attending this WebEx event. When you join as an attendee, as mentioned, your microphone will be muted automatically and you will not have the ability to turn on your camera. The menu at the bottom of the screen will have different icons for microphone. This will be grayed out. Participants, Q&A, more, and leave the event. If you can't hear, we suggest checking um, uh, the top menu option. It should have a communication uh, communicate tab that may help you with any audio issues that you may have. So to give testimony, you must raise your hand or you should raise your hand or comment in the chat and I will unmute you. To raise your hand, open the participant um, information panel. Again, that's the little <coughs> person on it and then click the hand icon on the lower right corner. Um, if you are connected by telephone, you may press star three to raise your hand. You will hear two beeps when you are taken off mute, then it is your turn to speak. Once your testimony is done, hit raise hand again to unclick, unclick the icon. That is very important because it will help me manage um, or understand who still wants to provide testimony. So again, the presenters will have um, about 10 minutes to give their presentation uninterrupted and we will not be taking any comments until the presenters are done. So I will now be passing over the, the um, presenter role over to Jennifer. Actually, I think you already have it, Jennifer. So if you guys want to just take over for your 10 minutes. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, right. thanks, Shanice. Actually, this is Dennis Squilty, uh, the attorney on the project for the Avery family, who's, who are the owners of 381 Beacon. And uh, Jennifer Mello, who's the project architect, will momentarily run us through the um, plans, what we're trying to accomplish here. And then obviously we'll stand by and take questions uh, for whoever uh, you know is involved in tonight's meeting. We have met previously with the NABB Architecture Committee, uh, and as Shanice just indicated, that this is a further requirement in order to be scheduled for the zoning board. So again, thanks to the mayor's office and Jennifer. If you're ready to go, let's go ahead and show everybody the plans. 
All right, thank you. So, good evening. My name is Jennifer Mello, and I'm the architectural designer for the proposed project. I'm with Pomeroy and Company, a design build general contractor, which has been working in the residential um, neighborhoods and historic neighborhoods of Boston and surrounding communities for 30 years. Uh, 381 Beacon Street, um, pictured here, is an owner-occupied single-family home. The owners, John and Jill Avery, have a genuine appreciation and respect for the architecture of the home and its contribution to the character of the neighborhood. They have already completed some exterior improvements to the home, including restoration of decorative stonework and bringing the walnut entry doors and paneling back to their original appearance. The project proposed is a garage addition um, to the rear of the house, providing secure enclosed parking for at least one vehicle. Currently, the house has a sunken patio area uh, enclosed by a wood gate, and there is a parking area for two cars uh, between the wood gate and the alley. There are two existing ginkgo trees here in, their, uh, in the sunken garden, and those were planted by previous owners. Um, so this next slide uh, shows the current condition of the three-sided bay window at the garden level uh, rear of the house. Uh, in the renovations by previous owners, the original windows were removed and replaced with doors, uh, which has compromised some of the original historic fabric of the bay at the garden level. All right, so our proposal is for a garage with a roof deck above. Um, this is the site plan, illustrating the garage's placement on the site. Um, so to pull the parking as close, uh, hold on, I'm gonna zoom this in a little bit for you so you can see better. All right, so this is the site plan with the alley here. Uh, this, this line here represents the, um, uh, the property line and the shaded area is the proposed garage uh, area. So the, underneath it dashed in, you can see the three-sided bay window, the sunken garden, the two ginkgo trees, so to pull the parking as close to the rear wall of the house as possible, we're uh, proposing to remove the bay window at the garden level, um, and all the upper stories of the bay will remain and be supported by steel beams. Um, so in the um, revised plan here, uh, the back wall of the, the garage will protrude 21 and a half feet uh, into the back lot, and that will leave about 15 feet 4 inches from the back wall of the garage to the property line. With another, with another four feet of the right of way to the alley. Um, looking over here, uh, this part of the, the drawing, you can see the existing conditions again with the existing parking. This is the alley curb, uh, the sunken garden, the bay window, which gets removed at the garden level. And this is the revised plan with the garage and um, the new parking area. So moving on to the next drawing. We have a larger uh, view of the plans. So the brick drive in the garage floor, if we look at the building section here, I'll pull this up. These will slope from alley level to four inches below the finished floor of the garden level of the existing house uh, for a total change of grade of 37 and three quarter inches. Um, there will be retaining walls on either side of the parking area, which will allow the neighbors' uh, parking areas to remain uh, as they are, the, the height that they're at. And then above the, above the garage will be a roof deck uh, with two large tree planters. Uh, the Avery's uh, are mindful that this garage addition will mean eliminating the two existing trees, and they want to replace some of that lost foliage with two new large trees on top of the roof deck. All right, so moving on to the elevations. Sorry about that. All right, so the proposed garage materials include brick to match the color of the existing house as closely as possible with cast stone lintels and wall caps to match the existing stone lintels on the house windows. So zooming into the rear elevation. So we also included some decorative brickwork here in a band above the, the garage door um, 
to further reduce the mass of the walls, we lowered the center section of the, the parapet by 19 inches to insert some decorative um, iron railing. And so the overall height of the garage from the bottom of the door to the top of the wall is 12 foot eight. And then if we look at the side elevations, um, these are the elevations that would be facing into the neighbor's courtyards or, or rear yards. Um, on average, they are approximately 13 feet, 10 and three quarter inches from their grade to the top of the parapet wall. And again, by carving this section out um, was a nod to making the wall appear a little bit smaller or a little bit shorter and a little less massive. Um, and so then again, there are trees planted on the deck and they're intended to reach a height of approximately 15 to 20 feet. All right. Um, so the next drawings we have are the structural drawings, um, but I will say that uh, generally speaking, the garage walls and the slab will be supported with helical piles and grade beams. Uh, steel beams and posts will support the existing brick house walls and the garage door opening. And the garage walls will be concrete with brick veneer and the retaining walls will also be concrete with brick veneer. Uh, this drawing is so showing a section through the deck above, garage here below, that's the garage slab. And you can see the, the steel beam intended to support the bay window above. Next drawing is that section through the garage showing, showing the slope of the garage floor. And again, the roof deck framing above and the beam supporting the, the brick wall above. Okay. All right. So. It was important to the owners um, that the design of the garage be rooted in both neighborhood precedent and historic detail. Uh, as we designed the project, we looked to nearby examples of other successful garage additions. So this is 221 Beacon Street. Uh, the garage addition has a very similar design with a roof deck above. The walls are brick with cast stone lintels. In this case, the garage is built right out to uh, the, the alley right of way. Um, and the deck here is fully exposed with the decorative iron railings above. Uh, in our design, uh, we felt it was important to keep the rear of the garage back from the alley um, to, to maintain our neighbors' ease of use getting in and out of their parking um, and having good visibility down the alley. Our next um, neighborhood precedent is at 319 Beacon Street. Um, this is also very similar, although it is a two-story addition. Uh, but it also has a roof deck above, and in this case, it does have a brick parapet wall, which covers half the height of the railing um, with a decorative railing above. And again, some very nice large trees and planters to add um, greenery to the, to the cityscape here. Um, so this also has a, a sloping drive with retaining walls to the right and left, very much like what we're proposing for our garage addition. All right, um, so looking to historic precedent was important for the owners as well. The use of the back base public alleys has historically been for utilitarian purposes in the service of the houses and rear L additions off the back of homes in either brick or wood were very common. And in a few cases, private stables were also built. So this picture here is um, the rear of 277 and 279 Marlborough Street and these these two um, additions were built in 1875 and they were built to be stable. Um, they've been updated recently and restored recently and they're used to um, house cars now, um, but they continue to serve that utilitarian purpose that they were originally intended. And they also continue to contribute to the character of the alley. Now, my next photo is directly across the alley from those two stables and this is at the rear of 343 Beacon Street. Um, this was built in uh, 1888, I believe, and it's still in service now as, as a garage in this case as well. So I want to finally um, end this presentation with a look down um, the very first block of this public alley that our garage addition is proposed for. Um, just because I, I like this picture, it gives a sense of the wood and masonry ancillary structures which have defined the character and the use of the alleys um, since 
the mid 19th century to present day. And given this history and the remaining historic structures in the alleys, it's our feeling that the proposed garage addition is in keeping with the historic use of the alleys and the materials and the details we're proposing are consistent with the character and the style of the historic structures. Um, so with that, I want to thank you and um, we'll do the, the question and answer part of the evening. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jennifer and Dennis. Mm -hmm. So we can now open the floor up to Q&A. So again, if you can um, either use the Q&A feature of the, uh, the chat function, or if you would like to provide a verbal testimony, just raise your hand so that I am able to unmute you. That would be great. Um, we do have a question in the Q&A, which states from Sanjeev um, Agarwal, I'm, I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Um, when were these additions done in the neighborhood? I do not think this has been done in the last two decades. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, so moving back to this addition, um, I, I don't know when this one was built. I, I do believe it's a 20th century addition, but I couldn't give you the date of when the, the permit was issued or when it was built. Uh, this second example, um, I believe it is possible that it, this was a 19th century addition onto the building, which has recently been renovated to include a garage. Right. Okay. Stephen Sayers asks, why are you going to the Board of Appeal? What relief do you need? Mm -hmm. So the uh, relief <clears throat> required is groundwater, pretty standard for the neighborhood, and then a one-dimensional violation, which is the rear yard setback. And that's, that's the entirety of it. <clears throat> okay. Um, Sanjeev asked a follow-up question, but there have been no additions in the last 50 year question. I don't think that's I don't think that's the case at all. I personally have permitted at least a couple of garages in the last 10 years, and I believe that the two that we showed, the first two that we showed, I mean, I, I think are a fairly recent vintage. And Jennifer, you know better than I. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Again, I, I don't know the exact date of when those were built, but they do appear to be either modern additions or very recent renovations. Okay. All right. Um, Stephen's follow-up question is, what is the hardship for the variance that is unique to this, pro uh, to this property? Well, the, certainly the, the hardship is our job in writing a decision if, if and when we get relief. Uh, and I would certainly direct it towards the safety of the individuals here looking for, you know, a safe and, you know, protective place to enter and leave the property with children, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but again, I mean, that's our job. In, if we're lucky enough to get the relief, our job is to write a decision which speaks to the, uh, you know, support for the grant of a variance. Okay. Michael Deering wants uh, to state, my wife and I live at 357 Beacon Street, apartment six. We both strongly oppose this uh, project. Thank you, Michael. You may submit your uh, verbal, I mean, excuse me, written comments to me directly. Um, and I am not seeing any further questions in the written questions in the Q&A chat, so I will go ahead and move on to verbal feedback. Beginning with Sanjeev. Hi, Sanjeev, can you hear us? Hi, um, this is Sarikan Sanjeev Agarwal. Okay, can you can you state your address for the record as well, please? Yes, it's 383 Beacon Street. We're in the adjacent unit on the okay. right-hand side. Perfect, then go ahead with your testimony. So um, we are, um, our living space is um, in the, the ground floor, which is at the level. Um, uh, at the garden level, and uh, our living room um, light is all related to having less than the 13-foot wall proposed. Um, in fact, having the trees on the roof deck would also um, potentially decrease the light in our first floor. Um, so we are looking at diminished lighting in, in both in our entire unit. Um, also, for us, 
um, it makes parking um, really difficult given the two structures that are already across from us. Um, so this uh, adds hardship to that piece for both the cars in our parking. Um, and um, essentially, we think the, especially the light piece uh, blocks, um, in addition to blocking the light, it diminishes the, the value of our unit um, because uh, that is one of uh, the pieces that people look to. So um, just we wanted to ensure that um, we give our testimony there. Okay, thank you. Uh, and you may respond. Jennifer, do you have any thoughts on this? Um, I guess by the one uh, response I wanted to um, make was in regard to uh, more difficulty in parking um, with this with the garage plan is i I'm, I'm not certain that will be the case um, because currently uh, zoom in here um, so this is where this dashed line with the seventeen point eight written across it is where the existing wood gate is now, and the, the neighbor's gate more or less lines up with that. So um, from, from that point on is their um, recessed courtyard, and up here, about in the, about the same depth as what uh, 381 Beacon Street has for parking is what they have for parking. So I don't think the garage in this location is going to impede their parking in any way. So I can speak to that. Um, in regard to the height of the wall, um, it is um, it will be higher than what is there currently. Um, I'm going to zoom this in. So this is the height of their existing wood fence, which is about seven feet high uh, from their parking area up. So and then as you go around to the side yard. Um, what's currently there is a retaining wall with a wood fence on top. So we will be adding another approximately 42 inches to the height of that um, barrier between the two units. So, but again, we did try to mitigate that by opening this up. Um, and there will be okay. probably less shade from these trees than there are from those two ginkgos. Thank you. And um, there won't be any more of those berries. <laughs> Okay, we have a couple follow-up questions from Stephen Sayer before we continue with uh, with the verbal feedback. So Stephen asked, how many cars will the garage house? Mm -hmm. um, the garage will house one for sure, um, two if you're very optimistic, um, depending on the size of the cars, of course. So two full-size SUVs, probably not. <coughs> one full-size and one um, smaller car, yes. Okay. And then he asked, will there be any lights on the deck? Um, there are no lights proposed for the deck. Okay. Um, finally, he asked, will there be cars parked in the open space between the garage and the alley? Um, there may be one car parked there. Yeah. Okay. Um, now returning mm -hmm. back to verbal feedback, we are going to go to Dexter Wood next. Hey, Dexter, can you hear us? Yes, can you say your name and address for the record, please? Yes, Dexter Wood and uh, Kathleen Murphy, who also owns the unit with me. So we're at 383 as well, which is the adjacent and contiguous building in the brownstone. Okay. We occupy the top two floors and the roof. Perfect. And go ahead with your testimony. And we have one of the deeded of the two parking spots behind the building, we own one of those deeded spaces as well as Sanjeev and his family. So I have a couple questions. I'll just run through them and then you can respond. Um, the first one with the sloped driveway into the garage, I'm just wondering, and you mentioned, I guess, uh, water. Um, so being part of the same building, I'm worried a little bit about drainage and how the water and drainage will be affected by having that sloped driveway down to um, the foot of the building. Um, the examples that you show of existing garages in the neighborhood, um, I don't think I remember seeing one of them that actually had adjacent parking spaces um, that were owned by neighbors. They were either freestanding garages with other uses next to them 
or something like that. So I don't think it's exactly comparable to the situation uh, we have at this building in, in our, our alley. And we have a grade issue on this alley to begin with between Fairfield and, and Gloucester with variations between one brownstone to the next. And um, as my neighbors um, spoke a minute ago, um, there are parking issues and the, the angles are very tough trying to back in or even front into any of these um, spots behind the brownstones because of the brick walls and the garage buildings that already exist. And to the extent you're going to have, you know, retain, retaining walls and whatnot, it, it, it makes it very difficult for the neighbors to, to park into the existing spots. Okay. Um, so in regard to the retaining walls, um, so this zooms in on um, where we're proposing those two walls. So the walls themselves are still within the property lines of 381 uh, Beacon Street. And they would just have a very short curb, um, perhaps eight inches high um, at the top of them that would be above your uh, parking level. Um, so the corner of the garage, if we look over here, um, this is where your existing fence is back there. This is uh, where the front face of the 381 Beacon Street garage will be. Um, it comes out approximately 30 inches beyond um, the face of your fence. So there will be that corner, um, but it will be within the, the property line of 381 Beacon Street. Um, so your the retaining walls will allow your parking area to stay at the level that it's at now, and the, the wall will not be coming up to a height wherein you can't open a door or, or get past it. it. It's just minimal to provide a curb for the for the tires. Um, as to answer your question about drainage, um, what we have planned here are two linear drains. So here's the, the two retaining walls, um, and this, the slope starts here and goes down this way. So in front of the garage door, there will be one um, linear drain. And then within the garage, there's also another linear drain. So our expectation is that all of the runoff coming into the driveway at 381 Pickett Street will run into the linear drain. And that linear drain will go to a water recovery system, which will be installed under the parking area uh, behind the garage. And that's so everybody understands that that's to be compliant with the other citation, which is the groundwater violation. Okay. Um, next, we will be moving on to uh, James Reed. One second. Oh, I am unable to unmute James for some reason. So let's move on to Sue Prindle. Hey, Sue, can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? Of course. Can you uh, say your name and address for the record, please? Yeah, Sue Prindle, 140 Marlboro Street. Uh, I'm representing the Architectural Commission of the Neighborhood Association. Um, and we did, as the uh, Councilor Quilty mentioned, we did see this proposal before. Our committee and the executive committee are opposed to the, op to the application. Um, since, since the development of the Back Bay Alley guidelines in the 1980s, the Neighborhood Association has supported open space in the alley and not enclosing additional space. I have I got to do some research on the objects were, that the, on the addresses that were cited, um, but I suspect that they were uh, proposed to create um, structures. Uh, the owner's proposal violates both the rear yard and the side yard setback requirements. It's a problem not only for the neighbor, for the, his neighbors, but the neighborhood as a whole. Approval would constitute a precedent that would open the way for infilling the rear yards throughout the back bay, and that's the reason that we're opposing it. The owner will not experience any hardship as a result of, of the denial. Open air parking spaces are the norm in back bay. They allow not only parking, but well, but green space. And they provide people in the street that add to the protectiveness of the area. Um, there's a big difference between the first block of the, of the alley, the Arlington-Berkeley blocks, which are totally closed in on both sides, 
and this area here where many of the yards are still open. And we would like to try to keep those that way, uh, and therefore we will be opposing this at, at the BDA. Yes, so I want one, one correction. We, we do not have a five-yard setback citation. We only have a zero-yard setback citation. Uh, I thought you were sticking too far out. Nope. No, nope. didn't say it. Okay, all right. Um, I also have a couple of questions, if I may. Um, one is um, you said that, that the uh, open space in the rear is 15 feet deep. Um, Correct. I don't believe that adequate parking space. I think parking spaces have to be 18 feet deep, do they not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, which means that the cars will be over the uh, sidewalk. And that, that, can, that can be a real problem for trash collection, for fire uh, prevention, and if you have to have fire trucks back there, that kind of thing. Uh, the other question is a technical one. When you talk about brick veneer, are you talking about full width brick, or are you talking about just the appearance of brick? Full width, full width brick. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That, cool. that I appreciate. Thank you. Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to mute you now. Okay. Next, we are going to go to Kathleen Murphy. Hey, Kathleen, can you hear us? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, can yep. you say your name and address for the record, please? I'm Kathleen Murphy. I live at 383 Beacon Street. The Agrawals are my neighbors. They have a beautiful courtyard on the first floor that needs sunlight. But I think more importantly, when you look at this garage addition, you're essentially adding capacity for two to four cars, depending on the size of the car, as Ms. Mello pointed out. Um, there's not enough room back there. You can barely back out or drive into your space. Um, it would be a safety hazard. It would be a hazard to all adjacent neighbors. When it is snowy and icy, trying to get out of that alley is not <clears throat> fun. Now you're saying the current owner has, you know, two cars. This is a permanent structure. It is not in compliance with setback. And it could hold up to four sports vehicles, three regular size vehicles versus the two spaces now, which it, it's already tight. So um, I appreciate the history of Back Bay, but this has nothing to do with horses. And cars today are much longer and wider. And this alley was not built for that. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, it's very troubling, very, very troubling. Um, it'll decrease the value of adjacent units. Um, it'll decrease the value of parking spaces. Um, and it'll decrease the lifestyle if this becomes a precedent or it becomes an allowance it's going to decrease the lifestyle of ground floor livers. So to say yes to this has ramifications that, you know, we can talk about right now. Um, I think I've pretty clearly outlined them. Okay, thank you, Kathleen. And, uh, and I'll give you the opportunity to respond if you wish. I think you know, the issue of the, the turning radius and things of that nature, I think we've answered two or three times. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I, I don't quite frankly think that a, you know, a structure that's well planned and good looking to the eye and has the plantings on it would be detrimental to anybody's property values, but that's the eye of the beholder. We certainly can't mm -hmm. argue with that. But I think we have answered the a number of times the you know, the accessibility of vehicle issues, and, and it's, there's no way this is built to hold three vehicles, so. Right. 
Um, I'm going to go on to Jamal. Hey, Jamal, I saw in the Q&A you wanted to provide some testimony. Can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? We can hear you. Um, can you just say your name and address for the record? Sure, Juliana Jamal, 367 Beacon Street. And I would just, I would, I would want to support the application. Um, I've lived in the neighborhood for about um, five, six years now, probably closer to five. And uh, one of the things with the back alleys that's quite um, troublesome is that it's kind of a mixed bag. Some um, homeowners uh, take great pride in keeping up and maintaining the back alley, and then you have the extreme where hardly anything is done. So, and from my perspective, I think it could only increase the value property of our our neighborhood, and um, I think they should go ahead and build their garage and have the roof deck as um, as designed, and I think it's uh, utilitarian, and that's a big plus because um, parking in the city is a mess, and it's getting worse and worse. So um, I hope they get the application through. Thank you. Thank you, Juliana. Okay. Um, let's see if there's anybody else that wants to make so I'm just gonna, can we just take a moment, if you have already provided testimony and don't wish to provide any further testimony, can you just make sure to unclick the raise hand feature so that I am aware that, um, so I can keep track of who still wants to provide testimony. Thank you. Okay, so next we're gonna go to Tom High, who has not had the opportunity to speak yet. Hey Tom, can you hear us? Can can you hear me? Yes, can you say your name and address for the record please? Yes. Tom High from BackBayHouses.org. I live at 124 Commonwealth Avenue. Um, I just wanted to comment, it's actually not very relevant to the ZBA hearings, the information that was provided on the uh, historic uses of the alleys. But I'm afraid, Jennifer, that you have a misimpression about uh, the alleys and the structures that are in the alleys. Um, the alleys which are located on um, the blocks where the blocks are 112 feet deep, which includes this alley, rarely, if ever, had uh, stable structures or other large structures of the kind that you're proposing. There were only seven uh, stable structures constructed on those streets. All the rest were constructed on either Back Street, which had 150-foot lots, or on Commonwealth Avenue, which had 124-and-a-half-foot lots. Um, the reason there were so few stables was because of exactly the points that the people are making tonight. They enclosed the block too much. They denied light. They denied uh, free access. And um, as a result, it, it was a very rare occurrence. There were L's. The L's rarely went all the way to the um, alley edge. Uh, but stable structures, which is what you're talking about here, <laughs> it's, except it's a stable for a car, were not a common historic feature uh, of these alleys in the back bay. Um, I'd also like to just comment that uh, as somebody who lives on an alley, um, I shudder every time I see a new wall or new garage uh, going up with a high wall that is close to the uh, walkway because two reasons. One, safety. This may provide more safety for the applicant, but it provides less safety for everybody else because people can hide behind those high walls. And secondly, uh, the um, need for open air and light is even more important now than it has been in the past. So I would really urge that, um, the, uh, that the Board of Appeal not approve these, this application. Okay, thank you, Tom. <clears throat> To speak to as, as to whether the rear L's were stables or not, I think is 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 not the, the relevant uh, issue. Uh, whether an L that was built on the back of one of these houses in the back bay was once used as a stable or not is 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 not really. I guess I'm repeating myself. Relevant. What's important is that these houses do traditionally have rear ancillary structures in support of the main house. You know whether that. Uh, regardless of what they were used for, um, the, these areas in the back, in, at the back of the homes were used um, for support structures. And this particular alley um, does have a few of them that exist, um, not as many as some as you get closer and closer to 
the public garden, you see more and more rear L's added to the houses. Um, so I, I think that I'm not being disingenuous when I when I bring out um, uh, precedent images of a structure that was built on the on the alley side that happened to be a, a, a stable. Um, as far as the high walls go, we purposely did not try to bring this garage all the way out to the property line at the rear of the prop property um, as close to the alley um, sidewalk as possible. We we left it back to leave space to leave space for the people parking on either side um, to be able to see and to have access. Um, so the, that rear wall also is not going to be anything for anyone to isn't going to create a danger for the neighbors because it's it's set back um, 15 foot 3 inches from the property line um, and 19 feet from the actual curb. Um, so I don't believe that to be a concern. Okay, thank you. Um, we're just going to read through a couple more um, written comments from Sanji. Um, they stated any, excuse me, any high school scraps of the doors or the cars, turning and parking the cars, even without any short walls, is very difficult. I believe you addressed that, and I don't know if you want to um, elaborate further. Mm -hmm. um, I think we would just want to make sure that the curb height that we put at the top of those retaining walls wasn't in danger of scratching the doors. So um, curb heights around the city, if those are six inches, let's say, um, we would we would stay at six inches if that was necessary. Um, but I don't think that eight inches is necessary, necessarily out of line, but we do want to be mindful of that, certainly. Okay. They followed the sunlight and air in our, in our 383 garden level is extremely important. Um, they stated not sure what the concern about safety is, that Avery have grown up kids. I don't believe that is necessarily an appropriate comment, but you do want to um, elaborate any more on the concern of safety you can? Well, I think I, I, would, I would only say that the Avery safety is in the eye of the Avery's, not in the eye of the next door neighbor. I mean, it, we can't, and that, it's kind of hard to argue against. That's one of, the, one of the reasons why they'd like to build the structure and utilize it for support of the main house. And, you know, if people don't understand that, that's their business. They followed, if they're, if it, sorry, if they were not for my garden level patio living in the back bay during this pandemic would have been very uncomfortable. Um, and finally, the wall is definitely, will definitely create a light and air issue for 383 to begin. Um, I think we've responded to these questions a couple of times now. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so next we're going to try to, okay, James Reed is trying to give verbal testimony, James, but I am not able to unmute you. I'm not quite sure um, what is going on. I'm usually able to unmute um, dial-in numbers. Could you potentially try to uh, write your testimony in through the chat and read it out loud for you. And again, if you have already given testimony and don't wish to provide any more testimony, please um, unclick the hand raise feature. We are approaching the 15 minute mark, so we are going to start wrapping up the meeting. Thank you. Okay. I see Dexter's hand is still up, so we're just going to circle back around. Oh, he just lowered it. And Stephen, hey Stephen, do you have any further testimony you want to provide for tonight? Questions before, so this is my first testimony, and I'm Stephen. Oh, okay. sorry about that. Can you just say your name and address for the record? <laughs> my name is Stephen Sayers, and I'm at 319 Marlboro Street in Unit Two. And this makes me think that zoning is really a compact among all of us neighbors to live in harmony with each other. Sets rules that none of us should should uh, violate so that we all can live and, and have quiet enjoyment of our property. What's important to me here is that uh, the Avery's need a variance from the rear yard setback. And that shows how important that rear yard setback is in zoning. And when I look outside my window across the alley, I see all of those buildings beautifully uniform, practically almost uniform the entire way 
and it's a beautiful view that I have of, of an alley. And it's quiet. I, you, there is no noise at night. We leave our windows open at night, all spring, summer, and fall long. And we've never had any noise out there in the alley. And when you take away that rear yard setback and you get a variance from it, the best evidence or the worst evidence of the result are the photographs that you showed of the other garages in the neighborhood. I would hate to have a garage in my alley like the ones you are showing there. They result obviously in overcrowding and congestion, and they make it a, a, a bad situation where the Averys may get a benefit for, for a, a deck, but it's at the expense of all of their neighbors. And I don't understand why they want to do that to all of us. Uh, we have very quiet um, alley now. Um, we are around 100 feet from where that deck is going to be. Uh, we go into the the back part of our, our property for the our den, our bedroom. We can see across the street. We can see their large computer screen through the window of their third floor if we want to. Uh, we're very close. We're all of us are here on, on top of each other. And that's going to be that much closer to the people on this side of the alley. And it's going to be to our detriment. And there will be noise there that's not there now. There will be smells there either of smoking or whatever else people smoke these days, potentially, because this isn't just about the Averys, it's about whoever buys the property after them. And we won't be inside our own house. We won't be able to open the windows after this uh, deck gets completed. And then there is gonna be parking. It's only 15 feet, four inches, I think, between there. And there, if they only have one, they have two cars now from what I've seen. And if the garage only holds one car, the other car is going to be parked out there going over the right of way, and it's going to be a safety issue for everyone in this alley. And I wish that they would reconsider and put the common benefit for all of their neighbors ahead of their self-interest. Okay, thank you, Stephen. I'm going to mute you now. And if you have anything to um, respond to that. No. Okay. Um, not seeing any further comments. Okay, we just got um, a comment from James Reed who was trying to speak. Uh, he states, I'm wondering what the owners have done to anticipate noise created by the use of the roof deck. As a longtime resident of Back Bay, I am, I am very aware that the use of roof decks is often the source of excessive noise during the warm weather months. The brick buildings in the Back Bay reflect sound almost perfectly. Too many neighbors have not been considerate. I acknowledge the intention is to use the, the deck for sitting on for just the, the, the family. Um, I don't believe there's any large parties planned for it. Um, uh, I can't provide any more details than that. Okay. Um, we see Kathleen Murphy has raised. Hi, Anne. Hey, Kathleen, can you hear us? Yes, we can hear you. Um, so thank you for, to the previous contributor. I think that was really well said. Um, anyone that lives in this block understands that we're all sharing a very precious yet small space back there. So Jennifer and Dennis had referred to turning radius. Um, I mean, anybody that has even a mid-sized car cannot, from a turning radius perspective, get out of the alley. In fact, many neighbors have to ask each other to move their cars so that they can get out. Um, as far as, you know, the noise of the deck and, you know, sharing the alley, this isn't really about um, the current family. Remember, this is a permanent structure, and the next family could put more than two cars there and could be partying on the deck all day long. So it's really, and, you know, setbacks um, are very important um, in our neighborhood, not just for the green space, but also for safety. And um, I just wanted to reiterate that um, you know, emergency vehicles, trash vehicles, <clears throat> cannot 
they can barely access what they need to at this point. Um, so adding um, a structure and adding more cars um, really um, impacts the safety of the community and believe it or not, the Avery's. So that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Kathleen. Um, so we are just getting to the last few minutes of the meeting. Um, so if you have any final questions, um, please use the chat feature. Um, so Sanjeev also stated, my windows would be next to the deck. I would not wish to see people on the deck every time I look out my window on the first floor. And Susan, uh, Sue Prindle states, do they have a roof deck already? Top of the building. Okay. And as we are approaching the end of the meeting, I'm just going to go ahead and upload the file that um, was originally on the screen so that you guys have my contact information. Again, this um, this proposal does not have a current, this is not currently scheduled for a hearing date. Um, so you may continue to submit comments regarding this proposal to myself and ZBA um, up until they have a hearing date. So again, any final comments, we'll just give everybody a few moments and if not, we will adjourn the meeting. Thank you, Shanice. Thanks, everybody, for attending. Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, so, Sanjeev asked, when would a decision be made and how would we find out about it? So, Sanjeev, like I stated, this proposal does not have a scheduled hearing date yet. Um, they were um, required to complete the community process. This is um, one of the requirements. The other requirement would have been to meet with the Neighborhood Association of the Back Bay, which they have done so already. So after this point, if the applicant would like to be scheduled for a hearing, they, they may, or they may uh, continue the uh, committee process if they wish to continue to engage um, their neighbors. Um, once they make it to the hearing date, uh, the board will take all uh, testimony um, under uh, consideration, which includes the mayor's office testimony and counselor, counselor testimony if they wish to provide and they would make a decision uh, to either approve uh, for the variances or deny the variances. And if you guys want to provide any final comments to wrap the meeting up, I think we don't have any anybody else that wants to provide any testimony. I think we're, I think we've, you know, given you our, you know, uh, our answers here as best we can and certainly uh, listen to everybody who spoke tonight and we'll be discussing this with uh, the Avery's and uh, Shanice, I'll be back in touch with you shortly. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and adjourn the meeting. Thank you everyone for joining tonight um, and you take care of yourself. Okay. Thanks, Shanice. Thank you very much. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye. All right.